want a drink? I got scotch, scotch on the rock, or scotch and water. Got a nice body for a guy your age. Come over here. Wanna do me? Hey! Interesting, but not quite good enough. So I hear you be in for aggravated assault, Bad Pearl. What fool assault you? A blue-eyed, yellow hair, white woman. I hate a blue-eyed woman. And I hate a yellow-haired woman. When I see one with blue eyes and yellow hair, it aggravates me. Then I assault her. You know what her name is, Bad Pearl? What? Samantha What? New Jersey, January 15th, 1950. Mother died in delivery, father unknown. Raised in foster homes, lots of foster homes. This is her juvenile rap sheet. She was one nasty little bundle of joy. Hey, Rosie! Get up. Get your belongings together. Warden wants to see you. Listen here, I want. 17, White joined a gang called the Diablos. She had an intimate relationship with the leader, Jimmy Alvarez, him you know. Here's their joint rap sheet. Nothing but second story burglaries, really. 12 arrests, no convictions until White got sent up. Alvarez went free, as you know. She served two years of a five-year sentence. She hasn't seen Jimmy since. Yes, indeed, you're going to max security for sticking bad pearl. 
20 witnesses would swear she had that fork in her arm since Christmas. Hey, they're letting you out. This is a guy named Lance Brady. White met him when she got out. He wanted a partner who was beautiful and could be socially acceptable, so uh, he took off the rough edges. Fixed her up, dressed her in style. She started going to the right parties and setting up classy burglaries. She was apprehended with Brady in February 1986. She's now doing 10 to 15 and not a model prisoner, so watch out for her. Any questions? All right, White. What are you doing? This is Agent Schofield. He's an SOB. I could tell. That stands for Special Operations Bureau. Mm -hmm. You're being released from this facility in his custody. Watch your table manner, Schofield. She likes to stick people with the cutlery. <clears throat> Could we please have her search for knives? Actually, last time it happened, she used a fork. I can handle you with a spoon. Okay, I got 32. 32 what? Cows. Aren't you counting cows? No, I am not counting cows. Well, what a bummer. I signed up for the Big Brother program, and I thought, well, they finally sent me somebody, and now you won't even count cows. How about 20 questions? OK, how about a game of one question? Please don't smoke in the car. If you're not my big brother, why am I here? You'll find out when the time comes. Who the hell is the SOB anyway? We're mandated to operate in undercover areas out of bounds to the FBI and the CIA. I can't be any more specific than that. No problem. Just be a sack. What the hell's wrong with this thing? Get off of there! You having fun? You'll just... Uh, I got it. Under control. That. The key, stupid. It's a locked wheel cover. Oh. Well, of course it is. You think I didn't know that? Well, you were handcuffed. Hey, what are you doing? What did you do? Hey, what? You dumb dumb. You sap. Talk about a fish out of water. <laughs> well, I guess you really got me, huh? So, uh, you can unlock it now. Sure has been fun. Yeah, joke's on me, huh? Mm -hmm. So, uh, give me my coat, all right? Hey, come on. Hey, uh... This is not funny anymore. I'd love to see you go after public enemy number one. You'd probably shoot your foot off. Give me my coat. You're still a convict, you know. All right, that, that's it. You're under arrest. You say so. Have a good one, Dumbo. Hey, you! No, 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 don't let her in that car. She's a, she's a fugitive. She's an escaped convict. You're disobeying an order from somebody who's mandated by Congress in unspecified areas. Come back here! Oh, darn it. Curiosity killed the cat, but I want to know. 
Why am I here? I told you. You'll find out when the time comes. in case I ever want to commit suicide. Wait, wait, I love this part. This? This is a great movie. This is horrible. I love this movie. This is crap, this movie. I love this movie. Look at her. Agents Waring and Blunt. Hi, Artie. How's your sweet little tush, huh? I'm higher off the ground than yours is, Stumpy. You guys want to get the hell out of my room? Uh, we've got your uh, clothes and things there. I've got them out of storage. That's something, anyway. I've prepared a door signal code for our immediate implementation. What? It's broken down by days, for example. What do we need it... that for? Any bad guy who doesn't have a heart condition can blow down this door. Who are the bad guys, anyway? Today is Tuesday. The knock code is as follows. I knock four times, too long and too short. You knock two times in response. I respond to your response by three short knocks. Then, and only then, do you let me in. Please memorize it. Okie dokie. I don't have to eat the whole book, do I? Give me that. I will be in the room next door. Agents Waring and Plot will be on guard in the hallway and in the lobby. Other than that, have a nice day. Mm, get out of my room. slaying on Capitol Hill. The victim, a woman in her late 20s, was found strangled to death. Channel 8's Taffy Hector is on the scene live via minicam. Taffy? Blonde, probably once beautiful, and now dead. Her body covered in blood. Lunch, Taffy. The police are... Still a story without an ending. What about now? Now? I don't know. I know that I'll never have the strength to leave you again. And Laszlo? Oh, you'll help him now, Richard, won't you? You'll see that he gets out. And then he'll have his work, all that he's been living for. All except one. He won't have you. Background briefing. Oh, wow, neat stuff. Background briefing. Matthew Bream is a congressman. He represents the 23rd. I don't 23rd know who Matthew Bream is. He was only in prison, not in a coma. I have to act so pompous all the time. I'm not pompous. I'm uncomfortable around criminals. Oh, excuse me. Why do you have to be so sarcastic all the time? Because I'm uncomfortable around straights, okay? You're gay? 
Oh, you jackass. That means people with jobs who wear wingtip shoes and neckties. Matthew Bream ran for Congress the first time as a war hero. He was aboard the USS Claremont when it was captured by the North Koreans in 1968. Of course, he has no hope whatsoever of getting the nomination, but he thinks that if he makes a good run for the, the vice, vice president, presidency, he'll be a star. Oh, that's so stupid. May I continue, please? Bream has been campaigning all over the country, but in two cities, Sacramento, California, and Springfield, Illinois, to be exact, there have been second-story burglaries that coincide with him and his people being there. Our bureaus have completed dossiers on all of it. Well, what's that got to do with me? Um, you'll see. We think that we don't matter. There's nothing we can do. I think it's time we realize we each have got the power. Thank you, Allie. Thank, Thank you, you Councilman Fields. Fields. I'm not, not going to talk, talk too long, long because all the talk in the world will not bring the American dream to the inner cities of this nation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The new frontier is a distant memory. The great society sank from its own weight. Okay, so if I could vote, I'd vote for him. No one. You're not very observant. And all the while, the citizen of the inner city. Oh my God, it's Jimmy Alvarez. And that's who it is. What's going on? You know him? What's he doing up there? Your former anamorata <laughs> is Matthew Bream's principal advisor on minorities. That's what. Did it. He found the way out. Yes, gang leader to so-called community leader to so-called political leader. Oh, so what's wrong with that? You know, he's smarter than the rest of them put together. And he's still a thief. He's the one. You'll see. You, the forgotten citizens of America, can step to the head of the line. Now, let me introduce you to our friend, Jimmy Alvarez. Listen to this man, because he's going to do it for all of us. Matthew Bream is going to build monuments out of your dreams. And that, brothers and sisters, is righteous. Jimmy Alvarez, if you live to be a hundred. We know he's committed second-story burglaries in Sacramento, California, and Springfield, Illinois. We also know that he'd like to negotiate some really ambitious steps in Washington uh, if he had the right kind of help. Oh, no. The scenario is to put the two of you together and allow you to do for him what you did for Lance Brady. And then what, I set him up so you can take him down? Not in your life. Yes, so be. In return for your services, uh, you'll be granted I don't want to hear what... an immediate parole. You're not hearing me, are you? Uh, this is your arrest record from nine years ago. A statement by Jimmy. He wasn't even there when I was busted. This has got to be a fake. Why would he do that? He... I never would have implicated him. I didn't. They tried. Jimmy Alvarez signed it. Uh, he was granted immunity from prosecution. There goes another myth shot to hell, huh? Honor among thieves. All right, I'll do it. What? I said I'd do it! You will? Well, that's great. Oh, that's terrific. That's fantastic. I'm really pleased. I'm sorry. Well, now, uh, the first step is for you to call Mr. Alvarez. Just like that, out of the blue? Yes, that's the plan, so that's what you'll do. You'll call him and say, Jimmy, I'm out of the slammer, and I'm interested in pulling second-story jobs with you again. Have to use those exact words? Oh, no, not those exact words. I can't begin to tell you how stupid they sound coming from you. Well, fine, fine. Uh, use your own words. Add some natural touches. Let me ask you something. Have you had experience in this area? Because i got to tell you, so far you haven't shown me much. Well, uh, up until this assignment, I was a personnel specialist. A what? Personnel specialist? Interrelating with people. Oh, well, that'll come in handy in a gunfight. Gunfight? Maybe we should come back another time. Are you serious? I'm real tired. I am serious. I mean it. I'm, I'm not sure I can protect you. Oh, and I really had my hopes up. 
Maybe there's a policeman around. Where are you going? Inside. <clears throat> Inside? So if you wouldn't mind letting us by, we would... Oh, ain't that cute. I ain't never heard garbage talk before. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's pretty funny, wasn't it? Fun? Hey, sweet thing. You ever been a biker's mama? Oh, your mama. What? Uh, she didn't mean that. Really, honest to God, she didn't Shut mean... up! My mama what? Runs naked through prisons, judging from you. <laughs> Chips, man. Come in. Uh, will you use the knock code, please? I don't feel like it. Well, doggone it, the door's not even locked. Didn't mean to get you all flustered. I'm, uh, I'm not flustered. Yeah, I can tell. Well, uh, it's almost time. Are you a little nervous about seeing your former, um, an amarata? What do you think? Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Have you ever thought of doing something with your life? Sure. I'd like to be a movie star. Oh, I'm serious. It's important to achieve your potential. Take me, for instance. I come from three generations of actuaries. My grandfather and father still practice in the same office in East Lansing, Michigan. You cannot imagine how much I want to hear this. Just let me make my point. I was really a, a lackluster student, failing to live up to my potential until I discovered the piccolo. The piccolo? You kidding me? I love that doggone piccolo. I got in the school band, and that's where I learned self-discipline, good work habits, interrelating with others. From there, was ninth in my class at Michigan State. And then two invaluable years of experience in the insurance business, and then the Special Operations Bureau with a special mandate to operate in uh, unspecified areas, et cetera, et cetera. You see, it's all in finding the key to your potential. Yeah, it's quite a story. You could tell that to the movies, you know. But, uh, I think if you put your mind to it, you could have a real career. No, no, I can't, not anymore. After listening to your life story, I'm too old. Hey, get out of here, Harry. Let me finish getting dressed. Hey, you called me Harry. It'll never happen again. You know, I think we could be embarking on a great adventure here. This could be the, the best days of our lives. I think that maybe... different on the phone and I knew that Brady guy had done you over but hey I never expected this gonna invite me in I'll do better than that it's good to see you baby you don't know how good hey what's the matter you getting too classy to give an old friend a real kiss huh no not me Jimmy hmm a bad drink, huh? Yeah. Sure. I can't believe how much you've changed, baby. You are so different, so smooth. I like it. You haven't done so bad, Jimmy. Well, I scoped it out for myself. All you gotta do is step forward and say, I represent my people. And they believe you, man. <laughs> they give you federal funds, and they don't even ask what you're gonna do with them. They think they did their thing for the poor. And you know what? They did. 
I used to be poor. And now I drive a Continental. Well, here's to you. You made it out of the bad times. You will too, Sammy. What's the matter? <laughs> I'm just remembering some sweet times. That's all. Yeah, they were sweet times, huh? Open the door. Use the door, not code. Would you open the door? How do I know it's you? Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Look, if you're not going to do the knock code, I can't be responsible. What are you doing? You want a full report? Well, yeah, I want a full. Well, not a full report, in case uh, you, uh... Well, what's it to you if I did? Nothing, nothing at all. Well, I didn't. Good, good. But what are you doing? You're packing. Yeah, change my mind. Hell with you. I'm not going to do this. No, no. Come on. You said you'd do it. You can't. Yeah, you well, can't. Pop, send the rest of my stuff into storage. Wait, but you just can't. Yes, I can't. No, you can't, because you're still in my custody. I'm not escaping, you moron. I'm going back to prison. Well, why? What happened? What did I do? Hey, did Jimmy Alvarez try something? Oh, you wouldn't understand in a million years. Look, I, you just can't. You can't do this to me, because if you do, they'll... they'll send me back to personnel. Well, what the hell do I care? Look, you. Every month for the last five years, I've put in for field duty. I've wanted it so badly I couldn't see straight. Then this happened. They said my organizational abilities, my talent for interrelating with people was just what they needed. That's what they said. I never even took a sick day off. You know what they could do? They could fire me. I have to go back to actuary work. You have any idea how dull that is? Please, don't do this to me. You're laughing. Why are you laughing? You are such a simp, you're almost cute. Yeah? Jimmy's gonna put me on the payroll as a research assistant. Well, that's great. He says that when Matthew Breen realizes what a class act I am, he'll invite me to all the fancy Washington parties he can't get invited to. Yeah, yeah. So I'll case the houses, I'll rob them, I'll deliver the stuff to Jimmy, and you can take him down. Is How's that for a scenario? Did I do my job? Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Now I get out of my face. Give me a chance to hate myself for what I'm about to do. Okay, she was here. You weren't wrong, man. She looked good, real good. Even I wouldn't have known her. Just answer me one question. How do you know the man will go for her? I mean, those hookers were one thing, but this is a classy lady. He ought to go for her. How can you be so sure? I'm sure. What are you after, anyway? You're a smart man. Don't overdo it. I'm sorry, Sammy. I'm not sorry enough to stop it, but I'm real sorry, baby. Good morning, Martha. Messages? Thank you. Come on, this way. Hey, Bernardo, how you doing? Hi, Jesse. Come on, sit over here. There you go. I'll be right back, okay? These boxes have a thousand letters in them. Our letter machine is broken down, so we have to seal them and stamp them ourselves. You want me to lick a thousand stamps? I'll get you a sponge. Good morning, Monica. These are the messages. Good. I'll call him right away. Uh, excuse me, Congressman Brady. Hey. Ah, terrific. Great. All right.
Who is that, Jimmy? Oh, I hired her. She's doing research for me. I'd like to meet her. I'm, I've got a few phone calls to make, and then bring her in. Sure. The only time I even saw him was when I was sworn in. There's nothing to be nervous about, Harry. The deputy director puts his pants on both legs at a time like God is supposed to. <laughs> now unclench your teeth. That's right. <clears throat> Good morning, Ivan. Good morning, Gordon. Ah, Harry. I'm Ivan Fletcher. Nice to meet you, sir. Well, sit down, sit. Thank you, sir. I've uh, read your interim report on the Alvarez case, Harry. It's going very well, sir. I gathered that. Well done. Gordon authorized Harry 15 days leave starting tomorrow. He's earned it. Sure, Ivan, if you say so. But, sir, why would I want to take leave? Uh, the assignment isn't finished yet. Uh, thank you for your time, Ivan. Mm -hmm. uh, but, sir, Special Operations Bureau policy is always continuity on a case. I want to be there to arrest Alvarez. Sir, I've been working in personnel for six years waiting for this chance. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Harry. But why? Because he said so. Now shut up, Harry. Sir, this may be the Special Operations Bureau, but it still falls under civil service regulations. I have a right to a review board if my competence is being questioned. I hereby request such a board, sir. <laughs> if you feel that strongly about it, Harry, stay on the case. Why? Thank you, sir. It's going to go like clockwork, I promise. Nice meeting you, Harry. Thank you, sir. <laughs> He's not such a bad guy. Now, you know I'd never miss one of your parties. Uh, Kiki Watwood meets Samantha White. I saw you coming, and I said, Grace Kelly is alive and young again. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet of you to say. Uh, How lovely it is to know you. Who are you? I'm here to steal your jewels. <laughs> oh, Matt, you sly boots. <laughs> Henry, darling. How nice oh, to wonderful. see you. Wonderful. Kiki hasn't been impressed since she met Dolly Madison. I thought she was Dolly Madison. <laughs> Come on, I want to show you off. You see, Mr. Secretary, my life was handed to me in a way. There was always love and expectation. But what if you're born in the ghetto and you grow to adulthood without one soul ever caring if you live or die? You need rescuing from all this man talk. Come on, I'll show you where the powder room is. <laughs> Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Wonderful. I'm sorry it's ending so soon. So am I. Samantha, uh, 
I'm not a man who's easily smitten. But I'd really like to see you again. You will, I promise. Again? What did I do this time? Are you egotists? Why are you so mad? First Jimmy, now Matthew Breen. What about Matthew Breen? I like him, that's why. Shit, you sure are easy. What? Didn't anybody spend 10 minutes with you're attracted to? Not quite everybody, Buster. Anyway, what's it to you? Nothing, it's nothing to me. Somebody think you're jealous or something. It's asinine. I have no reason to be jealous. I'll say you don't. Uh-oh. Think perhaps we should go the other way. That's a good idea. Cover you? Uh, where are my bullets? Harry! Shut the damn door! Ow! Don't run back! You're all hot stuff with a gun! Those dark bullets fell out. I mean, who'd be trying to kill us? You think they could have been muggers? Oh, yeah, sure, Harry. Muggers with machine guns and silencers. Yeah. Oh, oh. Now, this is the floor plan of the second story of Kiki Watwood's house. Now, at 0200 hours, the alarm systems... Uh, translate, please. Translate what? Oh, 200 hours. I'd hate to screw up, you know? Fine, fine. At 2 a.m., the alarm systems having been previously deactivated by... by... me. Well, of course, by you. Well, you make it sound like you're sending a crew of frogmen or something. Miss White will open the safe here, remove the contents, and effect a surreptitious exit. Say what? You'll sneak out. Oh, really? I'll sneak out after the burglary. Wow. Do you mind? Well, usually I jump up and down and say, got your stuff, in your face, things like that, you know? This broad's more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Keep your family out of this, beanpole. Oh, for Pete's sake. Now, as specified by Alvarez to Miss White, the rendezvous point will be here. The operation will commence at 2,400 hours. That's when it's very dark outside and both the big hand and the little hand are pointing straight up. At which time, Miss White will be wired with a body microphone. And then when she turns the stolen goods over to Alvarez, we will move in and effect arrest. Any questions? Yeah. Who gets to put the wire on her? 
Don't get your hopes up, Stumpy. You couldn't reach high enough. She must have got the safe open. Wait, what, you think I'm lying to you? Yeah, do a strip search right now. Get, get a matron in here, okay? Well, you have to admit, it would be to your advantage to, to hide the stuff and say there wasn't anything. You blockhead. In the first place, if I was gonna do that, wouldn't I at least take part of the money to Jimmy? Would I be so stupid as to say there was nothing there? Well, uh... Okay, and in the second place, you really think I'd cheat you? I'm, I'm sorry. You should be. I assume you're not going to arrest Jimmy since there is no evidence. Oh, please, give me some credit for a little intelligence. Have you given me any reason to so far? In case you haven't noticed, I'm a very honest person. Nothing in the safe, Jimmy. I mean, really nothing. I know. <laughs> no. That wasn't the big one anyway, Sammy. Hey, 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 I wanted to see if you still had the touch. If I could really trust you. What's going on? Sounds like groping to me. I don't care what she does. Think I care what she does? Jimmy. The big score, okay? I got a guy lined up with real big bucks. Who? Haven't you figured it out yet? Matthew Bream.
two places where we, we do disagree. Well, Senator, I'm, I'm sorry to disagree, but indeterminate sentencing was never the answer. That was just one flew over the cuckoo's nest in a prison setting. No, the answer to recidivism is finding programs that give prisoners a sense of self-worth, give them a stake in themselves. That's the only way the problem is ever going to be solved. Right on. Well, thank you. mother. She's gorgeous. She sure was. Is that you with the Pope? Yes. Yeah. You smell good. Um, wh what is ARG 92? Hmm? My name? What do you mean you're... That's the USS Claremont. I served on it. Sure you did. I know that. Everybody knows that. Capture must have been a nightmare for someone like you. Yes, it was. Well, if you don't want to talk about it, you can just, just forget I asked. Well, I don't much enjoy talking about it. But there is one thing you can say about the North Koreans. They let you find out how strong you are. Or how weak. I like you, Samantha. I really do. I like you, too. Well, good. Uh, come on, let's join the party. There may be a break in the strangler killing of a local prostitute here last month, Diane. District police think they've connected the local slaying with identical murders in two other U.S. cities, Springfield, Illinois, and Sacramento, California. Police are looking at it as the first important point in the investigation. On the lighter side of the news... Good night. You do more than that. Listen, Sonata. I lost my chance to kiss you a while ago, so. The SOB never investigated burglaries in Sacramento and Springfield. What? They gave me files. Dossiers they said were prepared by our bureaus. I just talked to our bureau in Sacramento. They never prepared any dossier. What they gave me were, were fakes. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Murder! That's what I'm talking about. There were murders in Sacramento and Springfield right when the Bream campaign was there. Murders and not robberies. Now do you see? <sighs> then invented the burglaries as an excuse to involve you. Well, what for? So Jimmy could murder me and then they catch him at it? I don't know. We have plenty of chances. Why do you do it? Brakes. What's wrong with the brakes? What? The brakes. There's something wrong with the brakes. Oh! Hang on. No! Please! I can't stop. I can't stop. What are we going to do? We're going to go through that light. Put it in the It's stuck! Uh, turn off ignition! 
Matthew Bream is addressing the Urban League at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at Constitution Hall, and Jimmy Alvarez will be with him, so I thought I would take this opportunity to search Jimmy's hotel room. Maybe I'll find something. I'm coming with you. You are not? If you don't let me come, I'll call the National Organization of Women and tell them you forced me to have sex with you. You and your name will take years. Play me a trade me, that's all I gotta say. What are you talking about? Well, doesn't this strike you as kind of dumb that a professional burglar standing here like a jerk while a personnel specialist is picking a lock? I almost had it. You sure you did? You got everything just the way you found it. I'll check the bed. Hey, hey, I, I know where we can look. Jimmy always used to hide money and stuff like that in the, in the float in the toilet. Great. Uh, no, no, Samantha, you don't want to go in there. Please, no. don't go in there. Are you all right? I'm fine. Check the toilet float. 
You were right. There's something here. Mr. Fletcher would like to talk to you. Good, because I would like to talk to him. Ah, Samantha. I'm Ivan Fletcher. Do you want to tell me what you were doing up there, Harry? I certainly do, sir. I figured out this whole thing is not about burglaries, it's about some prostitutes being killed. Oh, by who? Well, we thought Jimmy Alvarez, but he's dead, so, uh... And who killed Jimmy? That's what I want to know. Oh, Harry, you're smarter than I thought. Oh, well, thank you, sir. But you're wrong. The fact is, we had, uh, two task forces out here. You see, Jimmy Alvarez was controlling you. Jimmy Alvarez was a SOB agent? Not an agent. He was an undercover informer. Well, who was he informing on? The congressman, of course. The congressman? Why? What? Who cares about that? Hey, you! Who killed Jimmy? Uh, tell me, Harry, who do you think Jimmy murdered? Well, three prostitutes, one in Sacramento, California, one in Springfield, Illinois, and one right here in Washington. But am I talking to a sack? Who killed Jimmy? I'm about to tell you. Now, you've got the right victims, but the wrong strangler. Those three prostitutes were killed by Matthew Breen. He also killed Jimmy Alvarez. Sir, he's a congressman. There's no way Matthew Breen is a murderer. I'm afraid he is. Although, he was supposed to murder you. What? Well, there were no burglaries, my dear. I mean, that was just an exercise to get you involved. I was right. The plan was to put a dozen agents on Matt Bream's roof, at his windows, in his house. Well, there would have been television cameras hidden in every room. Your chances would have been, oh, well, fair to good. You're crazy. Would you like to hear the psychological profile of a systematic killer? Yes, sir. Well, Matthew Bream had what is called an Oedipus complex. Now that yeah, is... I know what that is. That's a man who's in love with his mother. Correct. Ah. But in Matt Bream's case, he'd found out at some point that his mother had been promiscuous all her life. So he started gravitating to women who resembled her. He couldn't punish his mother, so he punished them. Simple as that. Uh, okay. Well, why me? Oh, nothing personal? No, 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 no. You just fit the profile. You knew Jimmy Alvarez, and you were expendable. Why? Because I'm a convict? That is cold. Harry, uh, you didn't find anything in Jimmy's room, did you? No, we didn't find anything. Well, whether you believe it or not, I'm really sorry that you had to go through all this, Samantha. My problem now, of course, is that I have no way of stopping Matthew Breen. Listen, you wouldn't consider... No, I don't suppose you would. I couldn't appeal to your patriotic spirit, perhaps. Uh, strike that. Uh, sorry again. Well, I suppose the Republic will flounder on somehow, eh? <laughs> you have a good day. Nice car, Harry. Forget it. It isn't true. You heard what Mr. Fletcher said. I heard what he said, but damn it, Harry! Matthew Breen is, is the nicest, most decent guy I've ever met in my life. No offense. He cares about people, you know? If you were crazy, don't you think I'd be able to tell? Listen to this. We were looking at a picture of his mother, and I said, she's real good looking, and all he said was, you bet. I do not believe that he killed all those prostitutes. And I sure as hell don't believe he killed Jimmy. You know, about a million years ago, I asked you who the bad guys were? Yeah. I think we were just talking to him. So what happens now? I don't know. I gotta think. We go our separate ways. We go back to personnel. I go back to the joint. I don't want us to go our separate ways. You don't? I thought you hated me. That's ridiculous. I don't hate you. As a matter of fact, I like you. Are you kidding me? No, I'm, I'm serious. I'm quite serious. We have a lot of the same things. Self-discipline. Good interrelating skills. You're attractive. I mean, you're attractive, not that I'm attractive. 
And I also think you're quite intelligent. Is that why? Yes. And, and I, I... I would... Um, would... Um, um, this was in the float in, in Jimmy's toilet. Robert Kubiak, uh, 4 o'clock, whoever he is, at the Admiralty Club. I want you to come with me. You mean you're on the case even though you're not in the case anymore? Yes, yes, doggone it. And you and me are partners? Well, I wouldn't say we were hey, partners. Hey, whoa! <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... Hey, give me a hand. Not that way. I'm not checking your fingernails, stupid. Oh. <laughs> All right. You see, when they took Agent Alvarez off the case, um, they didn't have time to brief us, so we thought you could tell us what the substance of this meeting is to be. I couldn't say. Oh. Come on, Cat. Can I call you Bob? Uniforms kind of bum me out, you know? Okay, Bob. I happen to know that Jimmy Alvarez was not interested in a career in the Navy. So, what the hell kind of questions did he say he wanted to ask you about, huh? Be a good guy. This is really important. The USS Claremont. You were aboard the USS Claremont? That's right. ARG-92 was painted on the side of that, wasn't it? That's right. What, huh? Well, if I said, what is ARG-92, and someone said my name, would that seem weird to you? How do you know about that? What's ARG? We just know. <clears throat> it didn't work on me. You could be damn sure of that. Oh, yeah? Why not? Because I'm one of a small percentage of people who can't be hypnotized, ever, by anyone. Hypnotized by the North Koreans? I always supposed it must have worked on some of the others. Who did you find? Tell me. Oh, sorry, we can't. Hmm. Uh, was ARG-92 some, some kind of post-hypnotic suggestion? A, a trigger, yes. Was that the whole thing? Uh, was there more? Do you remember? I'll never forget as long as I live. It's a, it's a series of unlikely questions and answers. Obviously designed to keep anyone from being put under accidentally. It goes, what is ARG-92? My name. What is your name? ARG-92. Are you a human being? Yes. Who is your master? You are. It's like the tumblers in a lock. Once they're all in place, the lock opens. You do anything you're told. There's a, there's a word that brings you out of the trance, but that wasn't drummed into my head. I think, I think it was a girl's name. Or, or a flower. Hey, Harry, sh show Captain Bob Jimmy's list. Oh, that's right. Come on. That's right here. These are the uh, names of five officers who served on the Claremont, including me, of course. There were seven of us. Matthew Bream isn't on here. Now there's Ivan Fletcher. Ivan Fletcher? Was on the Claremont? He was the exec. What, was there uh, uh, some problem between Matthew Bream and Fletcher? Some old grudge, maybe? Nothing. They, they were friends. I, I shouldn't say any more. I have to go. Oh, please, please, one more question. Why would they do it? The North Koreans, I mean, uh, try to put you in a deep hypnosis like that. The gamble on the future, I guess. I'm just a paper shuffler. But Matt Bream is a congressman. If you were God knows what country out there, and you owned a few people with power, people who knew things, and all you had to do was call them on the phone, Take care. My head is... Oh, my head is spinning. 
Ivan Fletcher, I can't believe this. And you, where did you come up with all that stuff about ARG? I'll tell you outside. That was one of them. It was programmed. It's all falling into place. Except I haven't the faintest idea what it is that's falling into place. Uh, Harry, a, a guy that, that you could hypnotize and orders to do anything you wanted in the world. He'd be worth a lot of money, wouldn't he? I suppose. Captain Bob used the word own. Now, if you own something, you can sell it, can't you? Hey, 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 watch where you're going! That's fantastic. Bream doesn't know he's open to post-hypnotic suggestions, so he isn't loyal to anybody. I mean, anybody who had those questions could... Good grief. What if he actually got to be president? He'd be worth billions. Well, I just had another thought. What, what if these murders were just to show off the goods? You know, Fletcher must be a, a go-between or, or a, a broker or something. He'll, he'll line up the Chinese or the Russians or whoever. And to prove that Matt's really under his control, he makes him commit a murder. And Matt never knows he's done it. That's what makes him so valuable. You're fantastic. Yeah, I am. Well, I can't figure out, though, is why Fletcher went in all that trouble with Jimmy and me. Why didn't he have Matt kill some other hooker? I don't know. That's Fletcher. Boy, wouldn't I love to. Hey. Hey, I just figured out what we're going to do. What? I'm going to call Fletcher, tell him I changed my mind. I want to go through with the original plan, you know, where, where Matt tries to kill me and Fletcher's outside with the cavalry. What? The beauty is that while I'm in there with Matt, you'll be in there with Fletcher. Have you lost your marbles? Green will kill you and Fletcher will kill me. You still don't get it, do you? Get what? You, you did tape Captain Bob, right? Of course, correct. It's right here in my pocket, the tape. Okay. Do you have it yet? Fletcher's not the only one who knows the trigger questions. Hey, hey, pull over that paper, okay? I want to call Fletcher right now. Hey! I've missed you. Samantha, hello. I've missed you too. Matt. Yeah. Um, what is ARG 92? My name. What is your name? ARG 92. Um, are, are you a human being? Yes. Um, who is your master? You are. Okay, now, Matt, um, whenever anyone asks you again the question, what is ARG-92, the question will mean nothing to you, got that? Um, uh, it, 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 you would just say, the, the USS Claremont. Um, this whole series of questions will never mean anything to you again, do you understand? Yes. <laughs> Matthew Breen was unhypnotized forever! No, you did it. You're wonderful. No, you know something, you're wonderful. We're both wonderful. We have Ivan Fletcher right when we want him. I'm so excited! Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry. What the heck with it? Oh. That was good, man. That was very, very good. Now, man. Violet. Oh, Ivan, it was good to see you again. The Claremont reunion's a wonderful idea. Right, then I'll be in touch soon. It's a deal. to Rock Creek Park and make out? Huh. Get going. And be careful.
sir. Fruitful day? I'm not sure I know what you mean by fruitful, sir. Oh, you know, rendezvousing with our boys in uniform, that sort of thing? Boys in uniform? This is an interesting situation. See, you know about me. But I know you know, and now, of course, you know I know you know. But what's even more interesting is you think you know something I don't know. But not only do I know what you think I don't know, I know something you don't know. You do? That's right. Oh, my God, you are going to kill me. Well, not in the surveillance van, you twit. Uh, your gun, Harry. My gun? Ever so gently. It's right over there. That's a good boy. Now, kindly oblige me by handcuffing yourself to that rack over there. Quiet evenings at home with someone like you. I'll drink to that. Drinks too strong? No, it's fine. <sighs> it's time. It's not gonna work. He's unprogrammed. And she's gonna tell him everything. And, and even though you've got me, they'll get you. Excuse me. I'm sorry about this. Hello, this is Matthew Bream. I'm telling you, it's not gonna work. Matt, what is ARG-92? My name. God, it's working. What is your name? ARG-92. Matt, Matt, what are you doing? Are you a human being? Yes. Matt! Who is your master? You are. Matt, what's going on? Harry, what's going on here? This can't be happening. Matt, you are no. strong no, as no, you need no, to No, no, don't listen to it. Samantha is not to leave. Secure her and return to the no. front. No! selling him. Here we go, gentlemen. Matt, kill Samantha. Sit still, you're making me nervous. Any minute now. Go, 
Samantha, go! Shut up. Get on with it, Matt. Chrysanthemum. Oh, God, Matt, no. Um, um, wisteria. The pansy, pansy. Ah, uh, bows. Um. Yes, girls, names that are flowers. Shut up. Persimmon, tomato. No, flowers, flowers. Uh, bluebell, calendula, calendula, oh, tulip, tulip, oh, please, tulip. Rose, lily, rose, let rose. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Samantha, what in God's name was I doing? Samantha. Oh, un untie me! Untie me! God's name. <laughs> What's wrong? What's happening? Oh. Where's. Where? What? What is. What is ARG 92? Hello! Oh, you oh, can't do that! Oh, 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 <laughs> Don't be a twin, you twin! You twin! Come on, get a move on! Uh, are you a human being? Yes. Um, who is your master? Who are you? You are. What is she doing? Deprogramming your secret weapon. Forever. Boris. Okay, now, if anyone asks you the question, what is ARG-92, the question won't mean nothing to you anymore. You got that? Yes. No, man. Violet! What? I... Somebody tell me what's happening, Samantha. Randy, take her in. You, you leave me alone. Fletch is a traitor. You were hypnotized in North Korea. Like she's trying to stay in the highest bit of the Wait. Ivan, is all this true? I'm afraid it is, Matt. <laughs> You hadn't I, found out, man. I, I, I truly regret this. Randy. for it. Hit the floor rolling. And you're gonna cover me. Cover you with what? The block? You had a coat hanging. You need a gun to cover something. Here I go. Still be alive. But well, where'd he go? Upstairs. I'll check upstairs. You stay here. Not in your life. Check 
ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಬದ believe this <laughs> well, you, you bastard you can tell me the truth you killed Matt now did you kill Jimmy not personally he didn't have the guts did you okay now this is the biggie why me huh why didn't you have Matt just kill any other hooker why'd you need me because he they wouldn't buy him unless they saw him kill somebody he cared about well how the hell did you know he'd even go for me <laughs> he told him to I went to so much trouble. You know, this was... It was really hard. And it would have worked, too. He'd have done it, <laughs> and I'd have been... Uh, I would have been... Rich. Rich. <laughs> certainly been bizarre, and I have just made a decision. Yes? All of this never happened. I don't understand. Well, the deputy director and the congressman were slain by armed intruders who burst into a party that you two just were incidentally attending, and you survived. Uh, police will search diligently for the perpetrators. See? Aren't I smart? Gordon, you're talking about a cover-up uh, here. Harry, do you believe everything that you say happened, happened? Well, I, I, I know it sounds bizarre, but... Uh, yeah, see? If it sounds bizarre to you, and I think it's bizarre, how are we going to make Congress believe it? Or worse yet, Harry, 60 minutes. Now take a second and mull that over. That long enough? Yeah. Harry, I want you to take the rest of the week off and then report Monday to permanent field operations duty. That's a promotion. More money. Isn't that nice? Well, uh, I don't know. Can I think about it? Sorry. Orders. Whose? Mine. Oh. Samantha, you were just resourceful and altogether terrific. I wish you were an SOB agent. But since you aren't, it was nice never meeting you. I've got work to do if you'd excuse me. Gordon, what am I supposed to do with her? What? She was released in my custody. Well, then I hope you'll be very happy together. No, Gordon, you don't understand. I mean, she was released in my custody. Have a nice day. For... <laughs> uh, listen. So, uh, you think you'll be sticking around for a while? I have to stick around, stupid. I'm in your custody. I'm your ward. Probably get a job, you know, something real temporary. Well, look, I was thinking that, uh, maybe we could... Maybe we could, uh, um... Uh, well, you know, uh... Well, you did say I was almost cute. Hey, Ari, I'm, I'm kind of traumatized, you know? I, a guy I used to be in love with just died. The guy I really admired died. Anyway, I'm a criminal. You don't like criminals. You're not a criminal anymore. How do you know? I'll be anything I want to be. Maybe I'll be a criminal, maybe I won't. Oh, and then there's you. You, you are, without doubt, the straightest, most uptight citizen I have ever met. Do you know what it really is about you? It just hit me. 
Not once since I met you. Not one lousy time has your necktie been untied. Oh, it's always neat. That's why you and I have no future. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. I don't care. Well, can't we at least try? Try what? I don't know. My necktie just stays up there like that by itself. I can't help it. Doggone it. You know what really gets me sore? What? You never even got to hear me play the piccolo. Well, there are a lot of things I didn't get to do either. Like what? I didn't get to go out to Rock Creek Park and make out with you. I, I never got to do a real good door knock code with you. I never got to have you make mad, passionate love to me. But if you're in a guy's custody and he wants to play the piccolo, you gotta listen. First thing you're doing is taking off that tie. I can't. It's sewn to my shirt. <clears throat> and my shirt's sewn onto my, um, well, jeez. Ow. As I was saying, my shirt's sewn to my jacket and pants. It's all one piece. If I can open a safe pal, I can get that suit off of you. 